and start that. Lumser, I'm bored. What plaything do you have to offer to me today? Something from the SK... Well, I should... Let me restart that. It is not us this week. We're back to the SK system, Mom. Oh, yeah? It is... Well, not just any part of the SK system. A little place known as Florida. And Finally, those... Florida. Yeah. <laughs> and for those... Who are dyslexic, it is spelled P H O O R I D A. <laughs> but and for those for those in the comments, yeah, you could fight me on it. I'm from Florida too, so screw you. Um let me just say this. The story where this takes place, I used to live in the jurisdiction of this city, and it's a wonderful city. They did uh, at least on the last between I last checked in there, uh, they did a remodel or uh spruce up their downtown area and everything else. So that's a fun thing to to say. But in this article, it turns out there is a gentleman that got arrested in the Ocala area due to one throwing a brick through a window. And when the cop showed up, showed up because of this incident, he told the cops he was a time traveler and that he threw the brick through the window because he needed to save a baby sleeping in the room from some future event. He also admitted to swimming in the victim's pool. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, so how did this help the baby in the future? Do we not get any more... Uh... That pretty much that was the whole article. <laughs> hey, you wanted short, you got short. So, <laughs> indeed. So you got one, a Florida man. Two, you got short. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, we got to be short today because for some odd reason, Zoom is saying I haven't paid my bill. But that's all right. I'll pay it on Friday. More reason why you should drink more, Dubby. If subscribe, like, comment, also subscribe and join my OnlyFans. That way we don't have these problems in the future. Maybe it'll resolve technical issues. And donate too. to our tip fund. Yes, yes, and a tip jar. Just give us money. <laughs> Please give us money. We are not like each uh, each three po uh, podcasts. We're, we're not like Ethan Klein. We're not like. Uh, Joke to Franco, we nor are we like Logan Paul or PewDiePie. So we should do uh oh what what's that movie with Eddie Murphy where he pretends he's blind and he's crippled in the beginning? Oh, like um Trading Places. Trading places. Yeah, we, we need to come on YouTube, pretend that we're blind, missing legs, and then once somebody donates, we say good night, man. <laughs> Oh. No, in my luck, I see you wandering around Dirtyburg all goddamn day. Screw you. <laughs> you ain't you ain't handicapped. <laughs> Just an emotional. Well, what do you need me to? Me inside. <laughs> I should have used that in the. Uh, I finally adjusted the the things. Like I should have switched it to the other one I picked up of, uh, from Dan instead of what's up there. But. Uh... <laughs> I think it says like emotionally dead on it, uh, dead inside, but <sighs> yeah, somebody maybe you should get more, maybe you should get more money out of uh, the area and act like the the local yokels here in Martinsburg by saying, oh, "Give me a cigarette, give me money, give me a cigarette, give me money, give me a cigarette, give me money, give me a got a lighter." <laughs> But either way, uh, either way, indeed, indeed. Um, so not much on the agenda today because, like I said, I want to do a short episode and keep it kind of tiny and small. Um, because not sure how long you know I'm going to be able to record. Uh, but uh, yeah, recently, uh, Al and I went to a toy show. We didn't have time to talk about it last week or the week before. Um, it was the same weekend we came down to see you. There at the axe throwing place, um, but we had went the Saturday before because I guess Al was getting sick of being in the house. Yes, my my bruise now looks like somebody kissed me on my forearm, but 
but uh, we went to um, basically what was known as, um, oh, I'm trying to think of what it's called, toys or something. Um, I mentioned it to you in our messages. Anyways, but it was a toy show in Carlisle, was a, a small show, wasn't doing a whole lot. Um, if you pick up audio in the background, that that's not EVP, I, I, it's people talking in the background. Um, so don't get excited, all you ghost watchers out there. Um, but anyways, uh, with, uh, that being said, uh, we went, um, it was a really interesting show, um, because I've never really been to a toy show before, plenty of Comic Cons, plenty of things of that nature, um, I did manage to pick up a couple of new pins that Al snagged for me, um, found an Alicon, which excites me, Ba Weep, Grana Weep, Nini Ban, so... Give them an inner job cube. <laughs> but uh it was interesting because like I saw some nostalgic toys, um, things of that nature. Um I was looking at some of the Grimlocks because they had G1 Grimlock there. I think the lowest price I saw on a loose G1 that was incomplete was $75. I about had a heart attack from seeing that. Um on the most expensive one, loose, mind you, not complete he had his uh rifle but not his sword and they wanted 150 for that like double the one that i saw that was just completely sans everything and i'm just like yeah uh and it had a feel very much akin to like a flea market uh more than it did like a genuine toy show um now there was a few cool companies that were there um there was this one company um, wish would have kept some of the cards, um, but they kind of made like toys of dinosaurs, but they would make your own hybrid version of a dinosaur. You want to see what a snake and a T-Rex looks like combined? They got you. Alien Queen and a T-Rex, they got you. And it was see that kind of cool. That's the thing about a lot of these um conventions and uh whether it be a comic convention or a toy convention, you always have like yeah, they, some of the really small ones have that flea market feel. Uh, I remember listening to uh, Slacker and the Man. This was, again, uh, going, I want to say 10 years ago, uh, if not more than 10 years ago. Uh, he had on one of his co-hosts ran a comic shop near him, and he brought him to one day said, listen, you're closed today, right? And he said, yeah. Brought him to Mega, I think it was like MegaCon or something like that. And he was shocked. He was saying that on air. It's like, I was surprised. It's like, I should be setting up at a convention, something either a small one uh, or a big one like this, because uh, you have such a range of prices. Because you could have a uh, Origins, Wolverine Origins number one going for, you know, five bucks and one. And it could be in mint condition, like maybe a nine six, nine five, or even a nine oh for five bucks in one spot, and it's five hundred dollars in another spot, and people are buying it like there is no tomorrow. Uh now again, remember it's 10, 12 years ago when this went down, so you people spending might be different now. And similar thing, uh 10 years ago, a little more than 10 years ago, I sponsored somebody. Uh, he never been to Baltimore Comic Con before. And it's was like, listen, I'll pay, I'll pay for gas. I'll pay for your lunch. I'll pay for your ticket. Complete sponsored. I had the money to do it. And he's like, I never went, never been to it. And I'm like, listen, you don't have to bring money. Trust me. If you, I'm Sasha, I'm sure you could agree to this. You don't have to bring money to it. Uh, a comic con even if it's four state or yeah or larger you don't need to bring money you could spend all day in the damn panels if you want to especially with something like baltimore right and he he went in it's like he told me after we met up and because with a lot of larger shows you instant it whether you do it on purpose or not you're going to get split up we met up later and he's like dude i you won't believe how how many Hot Wheels places though where I spot him like I could have told you that and he's like yeah, yeah I, I I'm a Hot Wheels fanatic you know I like collecting Hot Wheels 
I didn't believe that there were this many Hot Wheels vendors at this event. I would have bought some cash. I'm like, <laughs> you didn't know. And now you know. But and it was that same thing, uh, that whole same event that our go-to in regards to seeing. He, this was also the first time that him seeing a lot of the, not just regular cosplayers, but the sexy cosplayers. Um, the ones that tend to wander around in bikinis all day. Yeah. And he was like, you know what? God bless America. <laughs> yeah. Because we'd be texting back and forth, where are you at? And it's like, uh, I don't know, but God bless America. I'm like, oh, uh, one of those. Very hey. little, like um, cosplayers at this convention, which was shocking. I mean, you know, because a lot of the vintage stuff, there's a lot of fandoms for and do. You know, you'd expect maybe somebody dressing up from like He Man or Mask or you know, throw out a popular toy line from the 80s or the 90s. And it was toys for the ages, by the way. Um, but Carlisle, Pennsylvania has like a pretty big expo center. I'm I'm shocked nobody's done a Comic Con up there. They really should. Um, maybe that's the universe speaking, me saying, Hey, you need to get a horror show and a Comic Con up there. And um, so basically, I'm like, stay out of Carlisle, and you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> that uh, to, I know we want to speed things on, but that reminds me. It's like good, show. even though you, with cosplay, you're going to have the standards at every show. I'm talking Deadpool, Harley Quinn, Doctor Who. Um, yeah, but this was like a toy usually... show, so I mean, it's a little different. And apparently, I mean, I was just looking it up on my phone. And it's like uh, PA's premiere toy show, which is kind of cool. Um, but it was interesting because like tickets to get in were like less than five bucks. Um, Al had grabbed me an Alicon, um, a Camp Crystal Lake sign as a little tiny pin, which was kind of cool. And then um, a Jurassic Park, but like one of the ones where it's like engraved in, but it had all the colors and stuff. And so that's been added to the bag strap. Um, but it, it was a decent show. Um, now him being into patches, like the whole toy thing was just curious because he was looking mostly for board games. And there were a few. Um, most of them were outrageously priced. Um, and it's like I told him, like all the big and popular ones like Mousetrap, you can get modern versions of. I mean, they're pretty much the same game except for maybe Clue, Monopoly. They've got different pieces now. Um, but I'm like, hey, you know, there, there's still other stuff there worth checking out. And so, yeah, out of the blue, we went and did that the Saturday we came and saw you. And I mean, for five bucks, you know, we killed like yeah. two or three hours, you know, and that's less than a price of a ticket. Um, I don't know what tables and booths cost because, again, I don't have the inventory to do a toy show though my desk would probably say otherwise um but outside of that um it, it was a good time um and it was definitely something out of the blue like i took him to um oh one of those record i can't think of what it's called but uh love drafts up in pa which we'll definitely visit when we go to four state um they occasionally have like a, a record day where they have the 45s and you know the the other lps there i like to go to those because i can pick up laser discs for like two or three dollars like the last one i went to i got the crow and dracula on laser discs which was kind of cool and i paid less than three dollars each but again i i like to collect dead formats what can i say uh, but that was an interesting side venture, side journey. Um, but conventions, if you get a chance, just go. It'll go to local ones. Don't go, don't worry about SDCC. Don't worry about big ones. Baltimore is nice to go to maybe once or twice, but I wouldn't turn it into an annual habit. I, I did. Uh, I, from when I found out about Baltimore, it was like 2000 four or five when i found out about it and i i went to baltimore up until like 2009 2010 uh when i ran out of ca cash to go it to me i loved going year in year out uh compared to wizard world uh because baltimore was always a fun and friendly environment to go to uh it's one of the places i met uh 
I'm no, I'm sure you guys at home can't really see it. It's the litho I now have over here. It's uh, Billy Tushy. You know, he, now, granted, he's a little bit more on the conservative side, but uh, he's a wonderful person to talk to. He's got humor part of him and everything else. And, you know, it it's that aspect of where you actually feel like you're part of family. And no, I'm not going to add a clip of Vin Diesel going family. But uh, <laughs> I'll just do all the part. That'll be a better me. <laughs> when you're here, you're family. You're family. <laughs> You know what? If if there's er, ever a chance of meeting Vin Diesel, I would want him to do an Olive Garden. It's like if you ever an Olive Garden, come down to Olive Garden where you're treated like family. <laughs> but um, it I, I didn't go John for Cena a while. Ernest movie. That's what I want. <laughs> but for the most part, Son of he, Ernest. <laughs> For the most part, uh, I the only reason why I don't go back to Baltimore that much is because uh, burnout, just burnout, just tired of going. You know, I want to have a few years between. I want, even though I, I could probably go back. You know, con somebody to go, and we all like, hey, I'll pay for lunch or gas or something. Just you know, let's go. But one of the fr- fun challenges I want to do, I um, <laughs> uh. One of my folks in the my D and D, she's like, I bet I'm willing to find you at a con. I'm like, oh, we're gonna if we're we're gonna do that, we're going to Baltimore. We're going to Baltimore. I'll pay for the parking. I'll pay for the tickets. Uh, we'll go. You won't find me. <laughs> you will not find me. Speaking uh, of, I'm considering a chance. I'm probably gonna snag tickets for Harrisburg on Friday. Do you want me to go ahead and grab yours while I'm at it? Uh. Sure, I could pay you back. All right. I figure it's wabi sabi, man, and it comes back around. I ain't worried about it. So at least let me make the offer to for it. What do tickets cost anyway for a two day pass? Um, I looked at the two day passes and for all three of us, it was like eighty eight bucks. But that's for three people, so, so it comes out to less than twenty right. ahead, like twenty one ahead. Uh, you said eighty something. That's eighty something. That's maybe twenty five. Yeah, something thirty like bucks that. a piece. Not less than bad. thirty bucks a piece. Yeah, so. it's less than thirty. So don't sweat it, man. We'll we'll figure it out. All comes out in the wash. You know. But either way, I I'm looking forward to uh, speaking. Of, I know you want to talk about other stuff, but speaking of four state, uh, the panels came out this past week. Yeah. Um. Uh, there's two that I want to uh, snag uh, if they allow, with permission that they want me to. Uh, we'll get if they give me permission, I'll snag. Uh, the first one is the Power Rangers panel. I have to gun for that. <laughs> it's been a long coat mafia podcast tradition over the past eight years. Uh, I, just I have to try. I just don't. I, I I I understand, but it's. Power Rangers and the Long Coat Mafia podcast have been enhanced. What Power Rangers panels, our show, and Four State have been hand in hand for the past eight years. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's one of those things I could go either way. One, if they tell me no, uh, I'm going to be the first to say, "Hey, the curse has been broken." But uh, I want to. One of the things, like usual rhetoric, you you guys have all, every, all the credit goes to you guys. But I would love to have a panel coming from the female perspective because uh, other than the actress who portrayed the human form of Rita Repulsa, it's mostly been guys. Yeah. So I would love to have a female perspective on it. And the other panel is one that's happening on Sunday. It's about the trope of saving the princess. And I think that would be an interesting thing to share with at least my audience and having, if I'm able to get, one or both of those panels uh we can in essence skip that because we're going to be at that event and we're going to be hung over good chance both those panels will be perfect for that week and we could take in essence a week off in regards to what we're we do so oh, oh, oh. i don't what? know what to do is justice what uh oh she's leaving the oh no sasha is leaving her desk no no, no two seconds 
Two seconds. No, we're not playing music. <laughs> I like how Zoom is like, are you playing uh, music? <laughs> oh, you're making a special brew? No, that's homemade ecto cooler. Ah. But it can be doctored up with certain things. I strongly I recommend. I strongly, I strongly re recommend anything with an orange or citrusy flavor, or hypnotic, <laughs> and that does wonders to it. But um, I figured out basically what Coke's formula for basically ecto cooler was. I read a couple online articles about it, how they made it, and they used like flavor packets. And there's a lemonade that they make with a flavor packet. And I'm trying to think what this jug is. And they make Tampico Citrus Punch with a flavor packet. And if you take a two liter bottle of basically their regular Minute Maid lemonade, because that's made with a flavor packet, and you mix it with one of those big giant jugs like I just showed of Tampico Citrus Punch, and you add like two or three drops of like green food coloring and shake accordingly, it is spot on. Let me just say this. If, if you have the aspect of offering me some, if you do doctor it up some way, shape, or form, please let me know or else I'll be, you know, I, that way I have honest warning. It, it Two versions will be available. You can have a virgin <laughs> or you can have it dirty. <laughs> Depending on the dirty version, please warn me because I don't want to walk into. If uh, I come to you, some... do you want a virgin or would you like it dirty? <laughs> I'm make... asking. The... <laughs> I, I'm still asking questions in regards to that dirty. <laughs> like, what? will I be tripping balls in about an hour? <laughs> I have yet to try it with absent. That is a good possibility. Because <laughs> I do have a supplier of the genuine wormwood stuff, and it's like, hmm, hmm. Yes, we'll show up to a few panels, Hunter Thompson style. <laughs> no, we're out of seat. I don't seat. want you to you stand in the back as long as you're quiet. <laughs> One, if I'm going to ask permission for the panels, I want to be stone cold sober. Um, now, because I know you have plans of hitting up a certain type of establishment the night or say the time between Saturday and Sunday. I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you not see the synergy there? Did they not know that there was something going on at the Ag Center? They must have, but I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't reach out to John or Andrew and try to make that synergy more cohesive. If they, if they know, in that sense, it's like, Sasha, again, warn me if you come up to me and go, I need you to drink this. I don't want to be walking into that establishment and going, oh, my God, Wonder Woman is stripping. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> There's, I don't want to be tripping out like this. This is loser for everyone. This is bat country. <laughs> Where are my gold fucking golf shoes? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think my best warning to you would be if I start any phrase with as your attorney, I advise you. I, as your attorney, I advise you to drink this. I'm going to say no. I No. 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 Because uh, if I'm going to be an asshole, I don't want to be an asshole. I don't know my level of assholeness is going to be when I am tripping balls. I've never tripped balls before. I've been it, forced to the wind. It's come out, and I got the bucket hat on, and I got like a cigarette hanging out of one side of my mouth. Yeah, then then you know you're in trouble. <laughs> because I've been four sheets to the wind before, and. Technically, only two people have seen me four sheets to the wind. Uh, technically, three, and you're not one of them. So that's all right. I I don't have that kind of fun anymore. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting too old for it. Oh, 44. 
I think the last time I was four sheets was uh, 2019 until 2020, New Year's Eve. And I got, I literally got four sheets to the wind. And after I, I, the bar didn't cut me off. My buddy didn't cut me off. He was enjoying the fact that I was four sheets to the wind. But I had the sensibility to cut myself off. And within an hour, I was stone cold sober. Yep. I probably wasn't, but I, I didn't have a hangover. I didn't, you know, but I was like sober. I could have passed for sober. Not been there, done that. I I know what you mean. No, it, it's it's just gonna be us having fun with Al throwing in. Al gets to be the straight man amongst the two of us, which is ironic on so many levels. <laughs> Depends. I, I've straightened up over the years. A trans woman, a Florida boar, Martinsburg madman, and a Boy Scout walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have the title of our episodes. <laughs> <laughs> trans woman, a Florida man with trauma, and a Boy Scout walk into a bar. No, it's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's this episode. Our hell will lie until my... you, you were taking it... you to uh, <laughs> Savannah's and then turn around and take you in the Stallions instead. <laughs> take you to Bears night. There's an awful lot of guys in here. And all of them are hairy and wearing leather. <laughs> Sasha, I'm not comfortable with this. <laughs> but I'm getting free drinks and food. It's like I'm not comfortable with this, but I'm getting free drinks and food. I, I I'm I've mixed emotions here. Now I'll just be like, work it. <laughs> <laughs> like your cards right, you might get a free car. <laughs> oh, we have fun though. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, Stallions is a cool place. You know, I've been there a couple of times and it's always been a, a blast. We went, I want to say, there was a time Al and I was up in Harrisburg, and we were just looking for something to do that evening. I'm like, well, we're like 15 minutes from Harrisburg. Let's try Stallions and see what's up for the evening. And this was like, I want to say, right before July 4th. So it's Harrisburg. Parking was already hell. All the parking garages were, shocker, closed. And um, I was like, well, if I don't find a spot within the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm giving up. Because we had stopped at, like, I want to say at least 10 different parking garages within walking vicinity. And I was like, hon, if you really want to go and do something tonight, find the one that's furthest away. I said, you finally have my permission to park the furthest away from our destination, and we can hoof it. It ain't that far. And so he took my advice, and he's like, oh, wow, yeah, this one's open. And I was like, yeah, it's the furthest away from the you know bar dance club district obviously it's gonna be empty or next to and we get down there and it was funny because i i saw another girl there like myself but it was kind of like looking into a mirror like 20 years ago and it's like i remember that girl <laughs> that's me 10 years ago because she was trying hard with everybody and it's like honey no <laughs> no <laughs> no and I did look up that uh I, I saw the event that you shared with me and then I'll, I looked them up on Facebook. They got it and like, yeah, last time I went to a club like this was last week. A few you lived in no. Uh actually stepped inside a club like that was maybe three, four months after I broke up with my ex because it was one of those things that my buddy this is before I even knew you. He was like, "Listen, go to you know, dude. Here's here's twenty bucks. Go to go to a club, and you have to at least get that mind, get her out of your mind. Just you need to see other people naked. Here's some money. Go, go, get shit. Like I don't want to go. It's a sell. I know how it is. I, I but you, it'll help you. It'll help you. Just help you." It's, it's just to help you refocus. It, it's the quote, you know, in a way, consider it kind of like an etch a sketch. It's just, it, just to get 
hard to get her out you of. You just need to be shaken. Uh, it's a reboot. You just need to be shaken. Just you know, get a lap dance. Get a you know, a, the Long Cove Mafia know. and Princess of Darkness do not advocate shaking of infants. <laughs> right. You just <laughs> you get three shakes. <laughs> After the third one, you're out. <laughs> But it, get a uh, get a lap dance, get a private dance, you know, just something. Get all he gave you was twenty dollars. No, I'm just saying. Uh, I went in with money to do it and just I was had like, a good time. What did you and go just, to if you got that for twenty bucks? It's Martinsburg. <laughs> da, 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 da. No, um, it would have been. It would have been. Hey, yeah, this is to remind you that it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> At C section Tuesday, two for one special. <laughs> as I was tell, uh, as I told Sasha before, it's like this is a high. She's like, this is a high end club. It's like the last time I was in the high end club was when I went to Philly back in two thousand two, and it was one of these high end clubs that everyone in there, their ugliest woman looked like one of the prettiest women here in Dirty Bird. Uh, one of those type of ordeals. And that's not the one on the, nine, I hope, because the one on nine's always been wretch. No, I mean if you went to one of the better ones that are here. Yeah, uh, that's like down, like down, 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 down. Or you go uh, out for the it might have been, area. Yeah, uh around there. I mean it, it was like one of the best looking women here was what one of the worst looking women there. And you, my buddy's like, I t- he told me and my buddy Mark, he's like, listen, this is a high-end establishment. Say we got a record deal. I'm your manager. You know, one of those type of deals. We had to make ourselves look big. And the other one we went to, this is where I was telling you, we found out later that it's the same club Kevin Smith went to before he got married and settled down. And before he got big, it pretty much, it looked like somebody put a Instead of a, a stage, it looked like a boxing ring without the the posts and the ropes around it, because it was just a square stage in the center, and it looked like stands all around it, and there was no wiggle room between you and. It's like going to the Alamo. Yeah, uh, like an it, it it was like that. You literally had nothing between. There was very little room between you and that table if you will and that's where the the dancers or entertainers would come around like would you like a lap dance <laughs> i'm like oh my god this is one of the worst clubs i've ever been in and we had to ex- when we finally left we exited through a adult bookstore kid you not and it was run by this oldest most ancient looking elderly woman you could ever see. And I was like, oh God. Not to mention my buddy disappeared for like two hours that he spent in regards to a private dance. Now at this time, I I think the statutory statutory limitations have run out. Um he was dating a stripper at the time and he's like, tell no one. But I think he broke up with her and you know where they are now, who knows? So who knows? <laughs> who knows? So I haven't seen either of them in like twenty years. So yeah, sorry. Friendships get like that sometimes. No, uh, not just that. Uh, uh, we it was bad blood. Just that we kind of drifted apart. Everybody kind of yeah. drifted apart. Everybody does so, that at, at some point. You know, it's human nature. But yeah. Mm-mm-mm. So yeah, there was the toy show, and then I had um stopped off at uh, back to the media. Um, I'm quite sure you've probably seen their fate posts on like Facebook and things of that nature. That's down there toward Winchester, and that was like what we went to do before we came up to see you. Um, uh, and like they've been slowly building an arcade. I want to say they picked up an original uh, Mario Brothers machine, not Super Mario Brothers, but original Mario Brothers arcade where you had the little pal block in the middle and it's kind of like a yeah. one player thing or a two player thing. And um, yeah, cause a lot of people think super Mario brothers is the first game. I'm like, no, technically donkey Kong is. And then you have donkey Kong jr. And then you have <laughs> Mario had a lot of weird jobs. He was fighting monkeys. 
then he worked for a construction crew and now he now he does plumbing and now he's the protector of the mushroom kingdom ah uh, quite a glow up there but um i've been, it, I've been seeing their posts in regards to their um they're building a retro arcade and everything else i know they've if this is the same place, I think they've had uh, drama themselves in regards to several things. It's just that, yeah, they're uh, well. They times, were in Chambersburg like, for a little bit. So they had the location in Chambersburg at the mall because that's where um, Rowdy Roddy Piper went right before he'd passed. Um, what's his name? It was from Gremlins. The guy who played Billy Peltzer. Yeah, I know who you mean, but his name escapes me. Yeah, but um, he uh, he was there for signing and things of that nature, and but anyways, no um, since Al's into pinball and everything else, and they have a few pinball, you know, they had posted about some pinballs that they had picked up. Um, they don't have the arcade set up yet, but clearly they have like new shirts and whatnot, which I kind of dug because you had a Transformers kind of like a a wrecker slash uh junky on feel to it and i'm like that's kind of cool um and while i was in there obviously i picked up the new shirt with the new design logo and um i picked up uh a copy of predators um with adrian brody in it um on blu-ray and that was like four bucks and i mean there was just the one pinball arcade there but you can try out all kinds of game systems they've got like the mini systems and things of that nature in there it's a real nice shop and i know online they do a lot of stuff with like audio where they'll have like records and stuff where they're showing what they've picked up in their collection sometimes they'll actually sell stuff online during like their video things um like to the highest bidder or whatnot which is cool and i've always you i've just always stopped by that candy shop huh did you stop by that candy shop that's down yeah, there? They have like a, a they have all that uh pinballs and stuff. Yes, Al, as soon in as there. Al saw because they had that frisbee golf game, as soon as yeah. he saw that, and then he saw, hey, they got pinball. He wanted to stop and take a look, and we we went in there for a little bit. Um, I'm not a big pinballer. I mean, I'll play it if he's playing. Um, but um, we played a couple rounds of pinball, and I picked up a Moxie and some Razzles because I haven't seen, you know, Razzles in forever. That's that uh, candy. It's like a candy that turns into a gum after you eat it. Yeah, it's weird stuff. And uh, but the Moxie, Moxie's like my favorite. Cause there's a candy shop in Carlisle. I'm constantly getting Moxie from because they kind of have like a mix and match, like six pack, and they even have like knee high grape and knee high orange in there. So, I mean, if that doesn't take you back, I don't know what will, you know. That's what I was uh, speaking of, mix and match. That's what I miss about uh, some of, I know um, before they were Regal, uh, they had it, the big theater here in Martinsburg. I know it's what I loved about that big theater. I know the Little Earth Theater when I was in Ocala, they, they had it, it's like, yeah, like every theater, they have M and M's, Reese's Pieces, peanuts, so forth and so on. They got the pack. What they had was, yeah, they had the packs, but you could buy bulk, like uh, mix. You can mix and match. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like seven bucks, but you could a pound. But you, if you wanted uh, a little bit of A, B, and C, you could mix and match and have that bag. And that's what I always, when I was in that small theater. I always used to do uh, a little bit of Reese's Pieces, a little bit of M and M's, a little bit of peanut M&M's, you know what, I want a little bit of this, a little bit of like uh, Nestle's Crunch Bits and uh, put them all in a bag, shake it all up, mix it, and you have that nice variety in there. It's usually spent like 10 bucks on it sometimes, but yeah. it was just having that large bag of candy. I've always wanted to do um, Like, I wanted to go to a theater that just, like, pre-mixes the popcorn for you. Like, if you want a candy in the popcorn, they just automatically do it. So, what I like to do at home is if you fresh pop some popcorn and you throw milk duds on it. Like, actual, like, the milk duds candy and shake it up. Let them get kind of melty. It's got to be fresh hot popcorn. That's one of the big caveats. Douse that thing with real butter after you've removed all the heavy milk fats. Because that's what shrivels up your popcorn, if you didn't know. 
and then throw some sea salt on that. And oh, it's heaven. Because you got the caramel, you got the chocolate, you got the popcorn. It's it's like the perfect fusion, but I've yet to find a theater that'll automatically do that for you. But Alamo, if you're listening, you, you want to get in my top billing, the number one, o- open a location in Chambersburg because the property for the mall is getting redeveloped, but it hasn't been sold yet. So that, that would be a good place to buy. Then I would quit my job tomorrow. Um, and yeah, g- give me my pre-mix popcorn where you can pick a candy and we'll mix it in for you as we pop it fresh, you know. Uh, but to dream, to dream. We don't really have very many good movies coming out because of the strike. And again, I totally understand where they're coming from. Um, but did you see the Blue Beetle like uh, popcorn uh, pub that they're going to have? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sadly, that's the aspect to it. Um the Berkeley Theater here used to do stuff like that, but not anymore. Uh, meaning the use, I I got a couple of like uh, when the like Adventures Endgame came out, mm. they had like different keychains and stuff. They had like a big, they do like big tubs of like, I have one that I'm using as a change bit. Uh, Jurassic World, they had the uh, Thor. Um, when Thor Ragnarok, they had Hulk's hammer mm-hmm. for a drink and the Hulk's fist for popcorn. They they haven't been doing that a lot, but I guess for a lot of smaller theaters, it can prove expensive, especially if not a lot of people are buying them. Yeah. And not a lot of people are going to see theaters, and especially that when there's a burnout, uh, especially with DC movies to start. It's kind of heading towards Marvel stu- uh, properties from what I'm hearing as well, that the stuff is starting to get lower and lower. They're getting yeah. sick and tired of how the Marvel movies are being presented, Disney movies are presented, and especially with what happened with uh, The Flash uh, a few months ago. And that all, a lot of that stuff is starting to go from like A tier or S tier to A tier to B tier to C tier. How blue, I'm not knocking Blue Beetle right now in any way, shape, or form, or the actors. Just that well, I guess we'll see how things fall when it comes out. Just that a lot of people, it's the it's the audience. They're, they're finally showing that they're tired of the whole aspect of superhero movies. Just oh, like they're it, tired of Star Wars. It's not just superhero movies. It's it seems like every release now is either a major blockbuster franchise or it's an indie and i think a lot of people are kind of like eh because we want more of those medium range films where you've got a good story a decent budget but maybe not like brand name actors like a place where new actors can cut their teeth you either have an extreme in- indie like you know the new talk to me movie i'm kind of curious about that movie i, I want to check it out or you have blockbusters like Barbie and Oppenheimer and things of that nature. I mean, Barbie just hit over a billion dollars, and it's like the first female-directed, female-led film to uh, across that threshold. Um, so I'll, I'll say that uh, it might not have been the first. I'll say this: it might not have been the first. You're. I'll say this for at least for the time being. You're right. It's the first female-directed and female lead. Uh, female directors have been around for a while. Wow, uh, yes, big, big was uh female directed, uh, it was right. done by the person who played uh Laverne, but big didn't Laverne pass Theater. a billion dollars, yeah, right? Right, so that's why I, I want to at least clarify it might be the first female le- a billion led bucks. billion dollars, but the thing is, I, I want to see if you hear heard this. Uh, did you hear what's been coming out of Paramount? This is from, I think, the Paramount CEO. Hmm. And that is, he stated that uh, in the future, we're not going to be doing brand new movies. We're just going to concentrate on remakes and reboots of what we have in the past. And when I heard about that, it, it if it's true, it, it it's already, they're just showing 
Hollywood is showing that they are already doing this. Yeah, because and it, the thing with a is, remake or a reboot or a requel, you already have an existing audience who's going to check it out. Because everybody it, is all talking about and all excited for the new Exorcist film. And, I mean, it, yes, I'm terrible on making a joke right off the bat, but uh, William Fredkin basically said exactly what he wanted to say about the upcoming sequel by passing before it came out. Does it make me sound like a dick? Yes. But I stand by that statement because it's already been shown to test audiences and even test audiences were like, meh, there's one good jump scare, but that's it. And it's a jump and, and scare. The thing, and the thing is, yeah, it plays to a brand new audience, but it's Disney's already doing it. Paramount's now doing it. And it's just right now it's like, hey, we could take we don't who needs the writers? Who needs the writers? We could just use the stuff that's already written. We don't need the writers. Let them be on strike for the next year if they're able to fund themselves. Heck, we could use the next we could use scabs if we want to. A lot of these scabs don't want to be part of the SAG union. So let's use them and we'll just create this new like but it listen. right now it's just paramount. That's doing this right now. It's not just Paramount. It's Disney that's doing this. Yeah, D- Disney's done it for a while, but people are already experiencing burnout. Even even Disney is finally feeling the sting of everybody like, hey, we're tired of these reboots and requels. I mean, look at Secret of Asia, uh, Invasion. Who's actually watching it now? I-, I watched like the first episode and I was bored as hell. When Andor came out for the Star Wars series, I was bored as hell. There was a couple great lines of dialogue, but it's like, if I want politics in my Star Wars, I'll watch Star Trek. You know? <laughs> and it's... And the thing is, in a couple, maybe about two weeks or so, Ahsoka's coming out. I want to see Ahsoka. Uh, I'll probably give an episode. Rebels. It might be just a reboot of Rebels, but I want to check it out. Uh but I want to see how they take it. How they go? That has labs, ghost spaceship. That's dope. Um, because I, all they I, least initially was the Phantom in the original Rebels toy line, which is like the shuttle that attaches to the ghost. And I'm like, does the original Phantom attach to the ghost? Because that would be kind of cool. But um, the new ghost, it's like a huge multi tiered ship that's got the full layout and certain removable sections. And yeah, it's it's five hundred bones, but it's it's the Star Wars place that we always wanted as kids, where it is to scale and looks right. But all in all, right now Disney Plus is losing money. I mean, bleeding money. Uh, Netflix is bleeding money. Everybody, all the other streaming services are bleeding money. Pursuit like. Uh, you can't even find Willow on Disney Plus anymore, I don't think. So, from what I heard, it, they're pulling stuff left and right. And yet, right now, well, look I think at they're look. They, they've they've yeah. canceled several Star Trek shows. They've pulled most of the movies from their platform, and I'm sitting there like, this is a property you own, and you're pulling it out because you want to have people to pay premium for it. It's like you're already getting five dollars a month. Calm your tits, you know. It's kind of like why I was disappointed in Twisted Metal. Love the show, great show. Want to watch more? Don't want to spend another six dollars a month for another streaming service. Now, I, like I told you, it's like I want to see Twisted Metal. I want to see. There's a couple of things on Power, uh, Peacock that I don't want to see. A few mu- movies have ca- come out on Peacock that I want to see, but. Uh, because um, a buddy of mine let me borrow his account or log in pass for his account, I'm still signed in on Peacock on my PS4 because my controller is wants to go, you know what, even though everything is dead center, it wants to act like it has severe drift and just go all over the place. I oh, can't select. And- that's, a, that's a frequent issue with those controllers. Most modern controllers get like that after a time. I hate to say it. Um, your options are simply put buy a new controller or buy a kit to open up your controller and correct it. And that's it. Uh, now, my... 
No, yeah, the, when I get a chance, I'll I'll just swing by uh, Panhandle Games and pick up a new controller. It's that easy. Yeah, that's that's what I would do. Um, because the thing of it is, is they may even be able to troubleshoot the drift on your controller for you. Because there is a chipset now you can buy for it that goes right in there, it takes care of the drift problem. Um, but the thing of it is, is is even PS5 is having these problems. Even the new Xbox, I always confused with X or S, whichever the newest one is, is having these problems. And it's because it's not just that controllers to last. The, the ones have had controller controller issues for a long time. Oh, yeah. the, uh, not just the series one uh, S and X is I haven't I've been having um uh, uh drift issues every now and again with when I had the OG Xbox One so it it's been like that and I've there's a video on my YouTube channel that I've called grind my gears you know from Family Guys same things like. I don't mind buying a wired controller, but it's not a wired controller. Right. It, the wired controllers are not wired controllers. And they're like, well, you plug a wire into the back of, you know, your, like I have here, you plug a wire back in to charge it. It's, you know, it's a wired, no, a wired controller is a wire embedded into that controller that if you yanked it a couple of times, yeah, a bad thing, you, we're going to get attacked by the YouTube algorithm, but if you jerk, well, again, if you shake the controller that by the wire, it's not going to come out of no. the controller. If all you get when you buy a wired controller nowadays, whether it be Sony or or Xbox, it's just like a USB C cable and a controller that plug you plug it in, and that there it's wired. And that'd be the case. I might buy, spend the extra 10, 20 bucks and get one that has a battery in the back of it and yeah, save money, you know, it's, and it's, it, it's madness and it's just the nature of the beast. Unfortunately, um, the only other thing I can recommend for your PS4 is to try to hard reset the controller, which if you look at the back of it, there's like this little pinhole. You got to hit that and hold down while the system's turned off. It'll purge the memory of the controller. Make sure you're not holding the thumbsticks while you're doing that. Plug it in using the USB cord into the PS4. Try to power it up using the controller by hitting the PS button. If that doesn't work, turn on the system manually and then hit the PS button and it should boot up. There's a couple other steps you can take to hard reboot them too. And sometimes that uh, corrects the issue. Um, something I found with both um, the Xbox and PlayStation, if you have a USB media hub attached to the front of either of those systems, or if you expanded like the USB slots that are available, sometimes that can, can screw with the controller drift, especially on the PS4. Um, so I used to have one of those like little adapters that took the two in the front and turned it into four. And just by doing that, it screws with the signal. It would even cause, not that Bethesda needed more issues, but it would cause issues with my save files anytime I was playing Fallout 4. And once I pulled it out, everything worked just fine. No problems, no bugs, nothing. And it was the weirdest that, thing. I don't have that with uh, my PS4. Or just that... That's one of the things I hate about the PS4 controls. Oh, you need like a... Uh a pin or something to reset it like that you know what this is in order for me to reset this i'll just take out the battery wait a couple of seconds and pop it back in that's all i have to do i think Easy there's a peasy. button sequence you can press on the ps4 controller too but i don't know it off the top of my head i'm just so used to popping an earring out popping it in there resetting it and calling it a day well, it'll probably be easier for me just to get a new controller and take the old controller and bring it to the rage room for somebody to smash yeah, you know, PS4 controllers right now, I mean, you can get a used one fairly cheap, but you may run into the same lag problem, um, but you can get a new one for, like, next to nothing. Right. Uh, see, maybe next month sometime. I'll see about getting it. But anyways, I wanna... instead, anyway. uh, I wanted to kind of keep the vid short today. That way, you know, Zoom doesn't go, oh, you've gone over your recording time. <laughs> 
But um, anyways, that's the show. As we like to say, that's the show. He's a gamer and in a bikini. And as we always say around here, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer and I'm wearing a bikini. Prove yep. me wrong. And as I say, I'm Pleasant Screams. And make sure you check us both out. Um, my stuff is on the Princess of Darkness as well as OnlyFans. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, anywhere. And OnlyFans. Let me emphasize OnlyFans. And then um, Chris, obviously, he's got his W plug. And he's got, of course, Long Coat Mafia podcast. And you can find him. It's got like a link tree site. It's got all kinds of stuff. He's everywhere, man. Everywhere, man. Everywhere you want to be, like American Express. Just not accepted everywhere, just everywhere. Hi, <laughs> do you know me? That's why I carry W. W, W, W. Anyways. Wait a minute. That's the show. Have a good night, guys.